Hi, I'm John Quartel, and this is a brief introduction to the powerful new color management functionality which we've built into Baselight 4.4. Let's start with an illustration of a classic, simple workflow. Here I have a Baselight scene with an ARRI Alexa ProRes shot. I know that this is recorded in Log C, and suppose I'm the kind of colorist who's comfortable with applying my grades in the camera space. All I'd need is an appropriate way to view Log C, and traditionally I'd do this by downloading a LUT from the ARRI website, putting it into my TrueLight directory, and then using it on the Baselight cursor view. Here, I'm using ARRI's photometric Log C to P3 LUT, and I can work in much the same way as a classic film grade. Suppose, on the other hand, I was the kind of colorist who likes to grade in a display space. Then, traditionally, I would use the same kind of LUT to render the material on input. Provided the display space of the LUT matches my grading display, then there's no need to apply a LUT or profile on the cursor view. Once again, I can now continue in much the same way as a classic video grade. In either scenario, things can rapidly get complicated as soon as my grading display doesn't match my LUT's assumptions, or when I come to render for different deliverable formats, like DCI or HD video. This would generally require yet more LUTs or TrueLight profiles applied in just the right places, which is not only tedious, but also gives plenty of scope for error. Now let me show you how the new features in Baselight 4.4 can drastically simplify your workflow. Let's take a close look at the scene settings, and in particular, this new menu called Working Color Space. This list of color spaces effectively replaces the old Baselight format color spaces, which were just simple tone mapping LUTs. These new generalized color spaces, as we call them, are full three-dimensional functions, so they can describe, say, the primaries as well as a transfer function. In this case, you can see that we've declared the working space as ARRI log C, wide gamut. In a moment, you'll see how this allows Baselight to correctly convert between color spaces. Now look at this other menu, labeled Display Rendering Transform. This effectively tells Baselight to insert a particular color transform whenever it needs to convert between a scene-referred color space, such as a camera log space, and a display-referred color space, such as P3. I'm going to select the ARRI Photometric option, and this will effectively apply the ARRI LUT when it's required. But, notice that there's no longer a reference to a particular display or input space. This is because the LUT has been defined internally in abstract terms, and it can therefore be used to connect any two color spaces. OK, now let's return to our scene, and take a look at another new menu here in the revamped cursor interface. Here, we can declare the color space of our view. Notice that this is the same list of generalized color spaces we saw on the scene settings menu. If I now choose this P3 option, you'll see that Baselight has applied a color conversion to the grading space, which gives us the same view of the material as we had earlier with the LUT in TrueLight. This time, however, I can choose whichever display space is appropriate for my current screen. Since you're probably watching this on a standard computer monitor, it's likely to look right for you if I choose sRGB. So, I can carry on grading in log using whichever type of display I happen to have, and without any requirement to download LUTs. Now, what about that P3 grading scenario? If I go back to the scene settings, I simply change the working space to P3, and I'm there. Baselight is now applying the color space conversion, complete with the ARRI photometric display transform, to the material on input. Now, I'm grading in P3 and notice that I can still keep my view on sRGB because Baselight is also applying a conversion from my grading space to my view space. When it's time to render a deliverable, we find that we can once again make use of a new color space menu. It works in exactly the same way as the cursor view menu we've just seen, only this time you're more likely to render for video or DCI. Again, the color space conversion between the grading and render spaces is invoked seamlessly and accurately, and with no need to hunt around for yet more LUTs. So, we've covered grading in a camera space and grading in a display space, but there are other approaches, and one worth mentioning is the ACES workflow, which you may have heard of. 
I'll just duck out of Baselight for a moment to bring up PDF. ACES is the Academy Color Encoding System and this is a schematic which the Academy published some time ago. Now the ACES concept is quite far-reaching and fairly subtle in some ways but in a nutshell it's all about defining a common reference space for digital processing and providing color transforms for conversions between the reference space and that of real devices. The main benefit of this approach is that it should allow us to seamlessly combine material from different camera sources and from CGI. Now, you might already have noticed that this fits in perfectly with Baselight's new integrated color management. In fact, these input device transforms are what we've used to define our scene-referred color spaces, and these output device transforms are equivalent to our display-referred color spaces. This reference rendering transform, which is a somewhat subjective way to turn scene-referred data into a visually pleasing image on a display, fits in where we have our display rendering transform. So, if we go back to our base light scene and open up the scene settings again, all we need to do to turn this into an ACES workflow is to switch our display rendering transform to the current ACES RRT and to choose an ACES grading space. You'll notice that I'm choosing a log flavor of the ACES space, which is not strictly part of the current ACES specification, which is defined in linear terms, but it does offer a much more familiar grading experience without sacrificing any of the important features of the ACES scheme. That really is all there is to it. Baselight is now converting the Alexa data to ACES on input, and when I apply a grade, I'm operating in the ACES space. Baselight is also handling the render to my view space via the RRT, and of course it'll handle a render to a deliverable space in exactly the same way. Let's see how this works with mixed media. You can see my next shot is an ACES EXR sequence, which is the kind of thing you might get from a VFX render. Notice that on the sequence operator we have another of these new color space menus. We use this one to declare the color space of the source material without having to define a new format. The next shot here is from a Sony F65 and we can see that in this case the color space is declared as automatic. This is another clever new feature for dealing with raw source data. Since the color space of raw is effectively undefined until you decode it, you can now let Baselight take control of the decoding to ensure it delivers the data to the stack in your working color space. You can see the decode options are now disabled, and this really simplifies working with raw material. So I hope with this brief introduction you've been able to get a flavor for how Baselight's integrated color space infrastructure can make light work of any workflow.